Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and a quilting and floss tube video tutorial. Today I want to share with you how I turned this haunted Halloween block from the week one mystery quilt and stitch along, but I'm using the quilt along to create a project bag for my cross stitch. And I am participating in the stitch along for the um, Haunted Halloween 2023 Mystery Quilt and Stitch Along. And I wasn't going to make the entire quilt this year, at least not at the moment, but I did want to create a Halloween project bag. So here on a design board, I have taken the week one block, and this block is called the bat in the sky and star block. So you, you do all of those. And I have cut all of the pieces for the bat in the sky. So that's going to be the moon and the bat. I am using some fabrics from the Sweetwater uh, late October collection that was released last year in 2022, I believe. I had this in my stash left over from a quilt that I have cut up and not sewn together yet. And I love this collection and thought it would be perfect. Now I am going to create the block, but I'm going to create my own setting and make a project bag very similar to the Flossiversary project bag. I'm sharing the process here on my design board. I cut all the pieces and I labeled them with the great little alphabetes from Fat Quarter Shop and I will have a link to all of those below. I am pressing everything on my wool pressing mat with my Oliso Craft little mini iron for the sake of the video, makes it a little easier. And I'm simply creating all of these pieces. Now I did not sew everything on camera for you guys today. Um, just to save a little bit of time, I'm not going to take it over to the sewing machine. So that part is cut out. Mostly I wanted to show you how you can take pretty much any block that's going to fit within the parameters of a project bag that you'd like to create and you can turn it into a project bag. In this case, the bat in the sky block measures 10 and a half inches square. So for our purposes today, this makes it very quick and easy. Now I do want to mention right here what I was showing is I am checking my fabric. If you have a directional print like text, as I'm showing here, I wanted it to all be going the same direction. After I have sewn, I am going to trim off a quarter of an inch from that stitched line before pressing. And I am just trying to be very conscious and aware of keeping that text print all in the same direction. So the orange text print will be the moon for the sake of this block here. And of course the black plaid is going to be the bat. Let me move that out of the way. And then I'm going to reference step the next step. So I'm going to grab those pieces and we're going to make the bat's head. So what we were first creating were the bat's wings. And again, I want to be very aware of the direction of my directional print. And I'm using a friction pen to draw my lines and then take that to the sewing machine and so a little line. I did reduce my stitch length to a smaller stitch length. Helps hold those pieces together. And basically I'm just working pretty slowly. Now if you feel very comfortable, you could easily do many steps at one time. But I, you're gonna notice me referencing the free pattern often throughout this video tutorial, just as an, adi an additional idea of how you can use this block. Let's move on to the next step where we're going to combine the bat's ears with the bat head, and then we can sew that whole row together. Surprisingly, this is not a 
maybe I shouldn't say surprisingly, this is not a hard block to put together at all. And it's very simple to make into a project bag as well. The great thing about any Fat Quarter Shop pattern is they always share the direction to press your seams or if it needs to be pressed open. So there you can see the top of our bat. Let's go ahead and sew this together. I am a pinner. If you do not uh, need to pin, that's fine too. And I went ahead and sewed both, and then I'm just simply going to press this. I love watching the little image come to life when you're piecing blocks like this. Let's do the body of our bat. So we need a G and I think a J. And for this, again, directional print. So I need to look at that and I always fold it up and see that's upside down. So let's flip it. And that looks good. So I'll draw my line, stitch, trim, add the other block and stitch and trim. I am gonna go ahead and draw my line now though while I have it out. This three and a half by 12 inch ruler is one of my very most often used rulers. I absolutely love it. Double check, I double check a lot. You can see I had it wrong. Directional prints, it's always worth checking. And then I check before I trim as well. Okay, let's give that a quick press. Let's line up all the rest of our pieces. And let's put the whole thing together. So now we're going to sew this block basically into three strips. So we're gonna add our squares on either side of the body. We're going to attach this to the upper part of the bat. And then we're going to attach the upper and bottom row. And at this point, our block is almost finished. Very quick. So I'm just going to pin this. We'll run over and stitch it. And then comes the tricky part of put, making it into a project bag. And I am more of a trial and error. So I do want to mention that my previous bag is 14 inches wide and I am basically going to go on the same size and scale of the Flossiversary Summer Sal 2023 project bag, which is the patriotic themed bag. It could be any type of bag. Um, it just has a patchwork front instead of a pieced block, but this bag is going to be basically the same size. So uh, we're pressing this seam open. The instructions say to press this one open. There are a lot of seams meeting here, and so it's going to lay nice and flat by pressing this one open. Cute, cute. I'm just going to hit that a couple times, and then we're going to sew the top and the bottom. Now, if you wanted to, you could just have a bat bag and you could piece this all with the orange background, but I wanna make this the moon. So I am gonna to run to my mach machine and I am going to stitch the top and bottom rows to my block. We're going to press this and we're pressing away from where all the seams are. So we will press to the upper and lower borders. And then we're going to use our background fabric to create that moon shape. So we're gonna we're gonna be adding squares to each corner of this block 
sewing them at a diagonal and trimming away and I'll show you that here in a minute. So here's our block. I'm going to set my seam and then press it towards the top. We're going to set our lower seam and press that down towards the bottom. Make sure that we get that pressed all the way out. I didn't have it pressed very good, so I'm fixing it. And now we have four squares of our background fabric. Now, what I like to do is a quarter inch from the very tippy little point of the wing, making sure so that that accounts for the seam allowance, I'm squaring up my block. I had a little bit of wonkiness going on, so I cleaned up those sides. And I've got four of these squares, and up until this point, everything is exactly like the pattern. Um, we're going to add our squares to each corner, we're going to draw a diagonal line, we're going to stitch down it, trim away, and press. So I am going to go do that really quick and then we're going to start assembling our back. I did two diagonal corners and then I did the other two corners and then I'm just going to trim them all at one time. Now you could opt to do a lighter fabric, but I wanted my the majority of my bag to have a pattern. And so I liked this dark gray with the little crosses in it, almost like a starry sky with the moon. And I'm just going to check it, square up anything I need to square up, kind of get rid of all the little fuzzies. Don't do that normally. <laughs> and then I am taking scraps of fabric and I am going to place them on each end. It doesn't have to be, um, you could measure if you want to. My preference generally is to make it a little bigger than what you actually need and then trim it down to size. So these are two and a half inch strips and I am going to cut them a little longer, number one, and I'm gonna sew these down each side and then I am going to trim off the excess so that it is even with the top and the bottom. Just squaring that up. Let's go ahead and do the bottom. And once I have that all squared up, I'm going to open it and press this open. And this is the bottom of the bag. And it really, it measures pretty good. I know, um, I believe this block measures, is supposed to measure 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So it's probably approximately 10 and a half inches tall by 14 inches wide or thereabouts. It should be anyway. So this is the bottom of the bag. The zipper will go above this and then we'll have a strip up above. So this is left over from that strip and where that seam is is slightly wonky. In quilts, I don't really love using where the fabric is folded in half because it is always a little wonky. Uh, I, I'm i gonna trim it up here though and go ahead and use it. I think we'll be all right. So let's trim that up. And that is going to be the top of the bag, that two and a half inch strip. And it just needs to be around 14 inches. I am going to cut it at about that. I'm going to cut it slightly longer because after the quilting process, I will trim it to, it'll probably be about two and a quarter by two and a half. And I'm using my other bag as a reference. 
Now I have this long by Annie zipper here that I think I'm going to use and I'm going to tell you why I'm using it. See this cute little ghost charm from Fat Quarter Shop? I have had this for a couple of years or at least a year and it doesn't fit on some of the smaller zippers that I like. The little opening in the zipper pull is not long enough. So I am going to go ahead and use a bigger zipper. And I like these by Annie zippers. They're really nice quality. I have trimmed my lining fabric slightly bigger, soft and stable slightly bigger. So it is probably more like 13 by 15. And I am going to lay out my lining fabric, my soft and stable, and then the front of my bag. And I am going to spray baste this this makes the process so easy, no pinning involved, and it stays in place. I personally love Soft and Stable for my project bags. It gives a nice body and weight to the project bag. You could use lining if you prefer. And we'll spray base the other side of the front. And then I'm going to flip it and we're going to spray baste the lining and make sure that the right side is out on your lining. And then um, I don't know if I show the basting or not. I am going to do a cross hatch style quilting. And what I like to do is line up my 45 degree angle with like the top edge of the fabric. And then I start drawing lines. And my personal favorite is about one inch. It does take a little bit to quilt a bag like this, but it looks so beautiful. And half inch is really fun, but that does take quite a bit longer. <laughs> You could always mark the front of your panel the way you like. I know I'm using a friction pin. I know some talk about it leaving a mark or not leaving a mark or the mark coming back. It is heat erasable. So when you set your iron to it, the heat does erase the pin mark. I have never had any trouble with the pin marks coming back. I have heard that in very cold climates they can, but again, I have never seen that even when it is super super cold here. So uh, I would say use whatever marking pin or system that works for you. I draw all my diagonal lines one way. Then I turn my ruler and I draw them the other way to get the cross hatch look. And I'll line up with a couple of those lines I just drew and I will start marking. Once my lines are all drawn, I will take this over to the sewing machine and using a longer stitch length, I am going to quilt the front of my bag and my set mine about three. I'm not going to share that. If you want to see the actual quilting, I will link to another video below and then I'm going to bring it back over after both the front and the back have been quilted and I am going to quote unquote, erase those lines that I drew with the heat from my iron. And I'm just going to make sure I go over the whole thing and get any of those dark marks that I see. And the quilting is stunning. I absolutely love how this turned out. I think it's going to be a really, really cute project bag. Then I want to cut the two pieces for the front of my bag. And I start with the bottom piece and I want to make sure I square it up. So using kind of the lines as a guide and then I'm, I'm just trying to make sure my panels are very even. I'm going to cut this up and then whatever width the bottom of my bag ends up being, I want to trim my top to the same width. And it does end up being about two and a quarter inches instead of two and a half. With the quilting, it does make it a little bit smaller. That's why I generally start with a little bit bigger than what I need to account for it shrinking up with the quilting. 
and I'm just going to double check. I tend to check a lot. You know the saying, measure twice or many times and cut once. And I did end up cutting this too small. I don't know why I cut it there, you guys. I don't know what I was thinking. So then I accidentally didn't, couldn't cut as much of this off. But luckily it will be hidden in the seam allowance. So I lucked out, but don't be me. I left it in here to show you the dumb things that I do. <laughs> okay, so there's the front of our bag. Next. For my binding, I'm actually going to use the same fabric that I used for the bat. I really like this. This is a three fabric bag with the exception of the lining, which is just a white tone on tone polka dot from either uh, Bonnie and Camille or Cory Yoder or someone because I have a love of all white on white prints, especially little white on white uh, mini polka dots or little pin dots. Those are my favorite. And since I have so much of that and I love the inside of my bag to be a lighter fabric most of the time, I just, I think it makes it easier when you're digging in your bag to see what you're looking for. Um, I just use something in my stash. Everything about this bag is a, is a stash buster. The fabric I had in my stash, the zipper I had in my stash, the charm I had in my stash. So really happy to kind of use up some of those fabrics and things that you guys see on the wall in my floss tube video. These are two inch strips and they are slightly longer than 14 inches because I like to again, cut it a little longer, maybe about a half inch to three quarters of an inch longer, and then trim it up. And we are going to put this on the bottom of the top piece of the front panel. This is how we're going to attach our zipper. And then we're going to put it on the top of the bottom piece. If you watched my other bag tutorial, it is going to be the exact same step. I hold, fold, pardon me, the two inch strip in half, iron it, and then I fold in each side and iron that down as well. And the ironing really just helps kind of give you that perfect crease and it helps to um, have it lined up beautifully. If a two inch strip is a little hard to work with because I know we are going around the soft and stable, you can trim it to two and a half inches and it will be a little bit easier. I'm using my Clover Wonder Clips to clip my binding in place. I'm going to take this over to the machine and I am going to stitch along the bottom edge on each. Then I went ahead and put the zipper in and stitched it in place. And again, please reference my other video to see exactly how I do that. It's going to be the exact same. So I went ahead and cut it out of this one. And then with your zipper pulled to the inside of your bag, you can trim up the zipper. And this is a nylon zipper, so it's easy to cut apart with scissors or a paper trimmer. And see how that charm just fits perfect on there? So cute. Okay, now that the front of our bag is all done, we're going to go ahead and trim down our background panel. So I sandwiched the background fabric, the lining, and the soft and stable, quilted it, and I always like to wait to trim this down until I have the front of my bag because it can vary a little bit and we want it exactly the same size. Once we have that, we're just going to take it and use it as a guide to trim up the back of our bag. Now, something about the back of my bag that I do want to mention is I didn't have enough of this little gray and orange and white print that I used for the background, but that's what I wanted to use for the back of my bag. And because I didn't have enough, I had a skinny strip. I actually cut it in half and sewed it together so it does have a little pieced seam in the back, but it's a project bag. Um, uh, I told my friends, we were talking about bags and, and things, and I was like, it's a project bag, not an heirloom piece. And so I don't really think about it that much. I thought it was totally fine and it doesn't bother me at all. 
Before we sew the front and back together, I do want to add a label. And these are labels from Sweetwater. I'm part of their tagged monthly club, and I know that's where these came from. You can also purchase labels, uh, monogram labels, right from their Etsy shop. And fun fact, this is the same company that designed it designed this fabric. So Sweetwater is one of my very, very favorites. I love them. And I have all these labels, so I've been slapping them on everything lately. I am going to just pin that in place, run that over to the sewing machine, and stitch around the very outside edge. I love the colors. I thought it was so cute uh, in a great way. There you can see the seam in the back of my bag. And again, I just, it doesn't really bother me but you could always choose a different fabric if it does bother you. Then I am going to clip the front and the back of my bag together after my label is in place using the Clover Wonder Clips and we're going to baste the layers together. We baste the layers together so that it doesn't shift when we go to add the binding. Make sure your zipper pull is in the center of the bag to stay out of the way of your needle And we're just going to clip all the way around and then do that kind of, I just do a long basting stitch to secure the front and the back of the bag. For my binding, I sewed together two two and a half inch strips and I used the traditional way to make a long piece. And again, please reference my other video for exactly how to do this if you've not done this before. We will have a little bit left over, I believe. And yes, and I'm going to iron this in half. So we're just making our binding and then we're going to sew this to the front of our project bag using a quarter inch seam. And a quarter inch foot is my preference here. I find that that helps keep me <laughs> exactly where I need to be when I am sewing. So I will leave a very wide opening where I like to join my binding is along the bottom of the bag. That's just generally where I do it. You can do it wherever you want, but I like to pick one of the longest sides. So that would be the top or the bottom here. And for me, the bottom is where I do that. Then you want to combine the bottom. In my previous video, I have step-by-step -step instructions for doing this. You want to cut your tail about the width of your binding strip, and in this case, and I always do it a quarter of an inch smaller. My binding is two and a half inches, so I cut it to two and a quarter. And that is the overlap. So I'm going to tell on myself, and I cut my, or I sewed mine and cut it without checking, the thing I say always not to do. So I actually had to piece another piece into the bottom of my binding and make it work. So there's extra seams down there, but again, it's a project bag and it's okay. So I am combining my ends just like I would with my binding, sewing at a diagonal. Oh, look, it fits now. That's why you see all those extra seams. I just wanted to explain. Uh, there's almost always a way to fix it. So I say that a lot in paper crafting too. There's ways to correct our mistakes. And then I am gonna go ahead and take that to the machine and finish stitching that quarter inch seam. Now this is what I wanna show you. One of my viewers, I believe it was Barbara, reminded me of a technique that I haven't done in a while and she's right, it does work good. It's gluing down your backing before machine stitching your binding down because it's going to almost always ensure that you catch all those edges. So I'm actually just, Elmer's glue, I think, I think it is Vanessa of Layla Boutique who does this, if I'm not mistaken, but um, she uses Elmer's glue. I had this craft glue from Simon Says Stamp, and so that's what I ended up using because I couldn't find my Elmer, any Elmer's glue uh, at home when I was doing this. 
and you put a little line of glue and then we want to just press our binding in place and take your time with this. Try as much as possible to have it even on all four sides and all the way down. So I'm pressing and it's going to dry and press that in place. Really, it's going to eliminate the need for tons of clover clips, which is awesome. And this helps get those corners perfectly mitered as well. So I'm just going to continue this. I did find I like to glue with my glue edge over on the right. For whatever reason, this is really comfortable for me. Just going to miter that a little bit better. Oh, I'm loving it so much, you guys. So I really wanted to show this as it is a little bit different than my last video. And I am going to continue going around all four sides. Just run a thin line of glue and then start folding your binding back. Everything else about this is going to be the same. Uh, when you take it to your sewing machine, you're going to flip it over and stitch from the front and you're going to stitch in the ditch which is just right along the binding on the front of your bag. And it's going to catch the back. But look how beautiful and even it is. By gluing this down, it really does help make it perfect. And again, I wanna thank, I, I, I think it was Barbara who mentioned this in a recent comment. And I thought, oh my gosh, yes. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I have done it a few times, not a ton, but since she told me that, I've done it like almost exclusively. And I've made quite a few bags after this one. If you feel like you need to secure a corner or a side, you can see I have binder clips in a couple places, probably where there isn't as much glue. I do that as well. And at the corners, I like to just fold, make sure we get that beautiful mitered corner. Okay, I'm gonna run this over to the machine and we're gonna stitch in the ditch and I'll be back. I'm just gonna snip off any little strings or whatever that I might have. And our Halloween project bag is all finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this extra idea of something that you can use and make with the free blocks from Fat Quarter Shop. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.